Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be setting up Vintoy on a USB stick and installing Open Media Vault. So the first thing you're going to need to do is head on over to Vintoy.net. And if you do not know what Vintoy is, it's a tool for creating bootable USB drives. And what sets it apart from things like Rufus and Belena Etcher is that you can just throw ISOs onto your disk and it'll be able to boot into any of them. It is the best tool for creating bootable USB drives in my opinion. So here we are on Vintoy.net. Let's take a look. Let's go to the documentation here and it's really easy to install. Click on get started and it's basically this easy. You download the Vintoy windows.zip if you're on windows and you unzip it and then you just run the ventoy2disk.exe where you'll be presented with this user interface and you select your USB disk right here, your USB drive and click install and it's that easy. Once you're done with that, you will be able to open up your file manager, click on the Ventoy USB drive and just start dropping ISOs into the ISO folder. And that's all you need to do. So I have already set up my Ventoy USB drive, as you can see here, and I have a bunch of ISOs in here. However, this Open Media Vault ISO might be out of date because I don't remember when I actually downloaded this. So we're going to go ahead to openmediavault.org and we're going to download the latest ISO. So this is what you're going to want to do. You click on Open Media Vault, download stable, give it some time and then we're going to save file and we're going to save it right to the Vintoy ISO USB drive. You can see it's downloading over here. And now your Vintoy USB drive is all set up and ready so you can safely eject it and plug it into your server. Whatever you're going to be using for your server, if it's an old laptop, old computer, Lenovo Think Center, any other small form factor computer, whatever you have. Plug it in and you might have to go into the BIOS or hit your boot menu and select the Ventoy USB drive and boot into it. I'm going to be doing this from a virtual machine. Here's the Ventoy selection menu. And if you don't have a bunch of other ISOs on your Ventoy drive like I do, you'll just see the Open Media Vault one here. And that's one we're gonna be using. So I've selected it and hit enter and just hit enter again to boot in normal mode. And now we have the Open Media Vault installer. When we want to install, we'll hit enter. And it'll take just a little bit of time to boot up. And here we go. We're going to select our language, hit enter, United States for our location, hitting enter. A lot of these we're just going to be hitting enter for our, the defaults are good. So American English. One thing to note, you want to have your server or whatever hardware you're going to be using for your server plugged in to Ethernet with an Internet connection. Host name, you can leave it Open Media Vault, or if you have some other name in mind, you can name it whatever you want here. And then domain. So if you have uh, a domain that you use, you can set it. Otherwise, if not, this doesn't really matter. So for me, I'm just going to delete it and hit continue. And now we need to set the root password. Type that in, down arrow, down arrow, enter on continue. Type it in again down arrow, down arrow, hit enter on continue. Select your time zone. Now it needs to partition the disk. So you can hit enter. You might not get this message if you have a blank hard drive. And here we need to choose the disk where we want Open Media Vault installed. It's not gonna be the flash drive, the USB drive that Vintoy is running. We want it to select the hard drive in the computer itself. So for me, this is going to be the 26.8 gigabyte virtual block device. For you, it's going to say whatever internal drive you have on the computer that you're installing this on. And then this is just confirming that we want to write these changes to the disk. 
This is the actual installation taking place now, so we'll wait for that to finish. And now there's a few options for configuring the package manager here. For me, the defaults are good. United States, hit enter on that. We don't need to set a proxy, down arrow, enter on continue. And this is going to configure app, the package manager for Debian, which is what Open Media Vault is based on. Now the installation is complete. The next thing we want to do is just remove the USB drive from the computer and hit enter and it's going to reboot the system. And when it comes up, it should just launch the grub bootloader and boot right into Open Media Vault. So here is Open Media Vault. It is now installed and it's running. There's two things you want to make sure of that you can see here on the terminal. One is that you have a valid IP address. For me, you can see it's 192.168.122.2. For you, it's gonna be likely different than that. But as long as you have a valid IP address there, you are golden. The other thing you need to take note of is the username is admin and the password is Open Media Vault because we're gonna be using that later. Now at this moment in time, if you have an older computer that you installed this on or a small form factor computer and you have a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse plugged into it you can now unplug those things this server is going to be headless um, so you're not going to be interacting with it directly with a keyboard plugged into it any longer from here on out you're going to be using the web interface or ssh into it to configure it can now walk away from this piece of hardware and go on to another computer or laptop and we're gonna do that and all you need to do is type in the IP address that it gave you for me it was this now we're presented with this page and we're gonna use that default login the username admin and password open media vault and here we are our server is up and running and it's ready for us to get it set up for a self-hosting environment. And we have a lot of work to do. I'm going to have to break this down into two, maybe three other videos so that we can go through all the settings to get this set up for a good and proper base to run the rest of our services on. We want to make sure that we have a good backup solution, that we have good notification and monitoring built into our system. It's going to require as little maintenance from us as possible, and it's going to be super reliable system. So stay tuned for the rest of these videos that will be coming out. Thank you for watching, and you have a nice day.